would you jump out of a plane? For sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm not that sure. Really? <laughs> to be honest, no. I'm I'm very. Um, I'm not. I'm not that much of an adrenaline junkie on on those parts, but I would do it if I had to. But I don't know if I would do it voluntarily. See, you always seem like you're up for anything. Like you will do anything, but I guess. But I guess not because yeah. I like I have to I have to choose my battles, <laughs> and, uh, and I, I wouldn't I wouldn't fight that one because also I don't you, have to. Well, yeah, and you've, <laughs> got, you've got an Olympics and more World Championships medals. Yeah, that that, that is what gives me the <laughs> huge, the the most adrenaline, and I also feel comfortable doing it. So that is that is the perfect thing for me. How um how careful are you as an athlete to not do things that could potentially harm you? Um, I'm very I'm actually very careful to be honest with you, mm-hmm. but and and I and I. <laughs> And I become and I'm becoming even more, um, you know, um, careful because I'm very afraid to 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 lose the thing that I love. You know, I, I love doing doing track and field and running, so so I want to be injury free to to do it. So I'm really careful, and he is he is even worse. <laughs> what do you mean? On, on my behalf. Yeah. On my behalf. I was gonna say, what's it like coaching a world champion athlete, especially when it comes to injuries? Um, I, I don't think so much about him being world champion, uh, actually. Uh, we, we are just looking all the time for improvement. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, so far, he has won the Worlds uh, twice. But uh, that shouldn't be a sleeping pillow. It's uh, just that uh, so far, the process has gone very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, w- I would like that to continue, to, to pursue aggressively, to improve. It's uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, talking about winning, but we have a sport that uh, can be measured. So, so you can run faster and still be somebody has improved more than you and you are beaten. I don't think that should kill you. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. Sure. Well, so you two have a really fun coaching dynamic. Oh, yeah, there's been a lot of um, web articles about you guys' relationship, especially my favorite thing that I saw you guys do was uh, at the European indoors last year, because you were running some pretty fast times indoors over 400 meters, right? Yeah. And you weren't sure whether you were going to compete at the European Indoor Championships. Um, what was the story behind that? <laughs> so the story, um, the, the actual real story here. Okay. This is the real story <laughs> because the Instagram picture was something that we made for fun because <laughs> it was it was a topic in Norway in the media as if I was going to go or whatever. So. When I decided to go, we just made a, like a hostage situation where where I where I blackmailed him f- to for the opportunity, but uh, but the actual real story is that I was very eager to buy a racehorse. So what? I, I wanted my own racehorse <laughs> so I could so so I could use on on the track and everything. Uh-huh. And, um, Wait, so uh, you would race the horse on the track or? No, no, no. I wouldn't race the horse, but I oh. I, would, I would I would own the horse. Oh, that, I, that thought, was, that was the thing. <laughs> I thought no, you no. meant like for training and that. No, kind of no, thing. no. Yeah, he could join my training because that was also a part of it. I wanted life to to uh, to uh, coach the horse as well, so we could have a. <laughs> So we could have a winning horse. Wait, do you, are, are you involved in racehorsing at all? No, no. And I, t- I, I told him. You've had some offers. Yeah, I've seen them. Offers. Yeah, 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 I have some offers. But <laughs> uh, I, I told him uh, owning a racehorse is not the fastest way to lose money, but it's the surest. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so the thing was, he, he, he told me, because I was very eager, I was, I was almost uh, buying the horse, and he told me that, if you don't buy the horse, we most likely can go to Glasgow. So that, that was how it happened. I was like, okay, fine. I want to go to Glasgow. I think I can run really fast there so the horse can can wait. <laughs> and have you still haven't got a horse? No, I'm not allowed to because the no, deal no the, the deal. deal no the deal is like it's it's a it's a year long deal. I don't know how long, but uh yeah, yeah I, I I don't know if there is an English expression, but in 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 uh, Norwegian they say a horse trade. We did a horse trade. Oh, okay. I mean, so so if he dropped buying the horse, uh, we could agree on that him him going running the the European indoor. Okay, I figured though, given you won the world title and that kind of thing, he'd maybe let you buy a horse. But I guess. We'll save that for another time. Uh, oh, he doesn't <laughs> care about that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, you had a really fun time in Glasgow as well. I saw you with that. Uh, you tried on a, a Scottish kilt. How was that? I did. It was. It was really fun because I always, I always like 
like the 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 kilt. I'm I'm very sad that that's not uh, our outfit in Norway as well. <laughs> we have something else, but the the kilt it's 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 so awesome and it's like you know when you can feel the wind going through your balls because you don't have any underwear. <laughs> that is like that is like the biggest dream. So um, <laughs> so. Uh, when I, when, I, when I get the chance to try it, of course, I had to take it. So um, I got I to gotta get my own kilt also. <laughs> For those of you who are unaware, a, a kilt is something that people in Scotland wear. Um, it's kind of like a, a, a knee length uh, dress, but you don't wear any underwear. So yeah. Um, so you, you, should, you should avoid man spreading and everything when you do it. And maybe the 400 meter hurdles. Yeah. <laughs> But it would probably be something for the spectators. <laughs> well, you might please a lot of people. So, yep, yep. so my, <laughs> it's like it's like one of those things where you don't want your uh, family on the stands and everything. You, you don't do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, we should move on. <laughs> yeah, we should. <laughs> so, but you you were really good <laughs> indoor uh, indoor running. Um, is there something special about the indoors for you? Um, I actually like it a lot, and uh, of course, because in Norway we we have a long winter, mm-hmm. and um, an indoor facility is, is the thing that 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 manage us to to, to keep on training. Uh, we we don't train that much in in two hundred meter courses indoors, but we tra- always train indoors. So mm-hmm. uh, when um, when I become an older, I've been doing some more work indoors. So so I like running indoors. I feel like that is something that I'm good at, and and I like doing it. So. So it's important to me to get some indoor meets uh, mm-hmm. in the winter, actually. What is your training group like? Because it's not just the two of you. No, uh, we have three girls as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it's uh, me and life. Um, so uh, it's it's a very nice training group, actually. I think we, we, we function very well uh, socially. You know, we have, we have a very good environment. Everybody is good friends and we... And we enjoy each other, enjoy each other's company. So that that is that is also a plan behind it because you need to you need to enjoy going to work and uh, mm-hmm. and they are also part of that and they are also very hard workers and they are very dedicated to to what they do. So that is that is also a good reason to have them there. What's the background with, between how you two met? Because I, I know life you used to be a sprinter <laughs> yourself, but how did this come to be? Well, it was um, uh, Carson's mother uh, approached the federation when he was about to move from his uh, hometown, and uh, and by chance, uh, well, uh, a guy that uh, worked there has worked with me earlier, and um, he thought it would be a good fit, so he was uh, proposing me to them. What he, what he really said was, he said, "There's only." one guy there's only one name i want to put on the table for you guys and there is there is no other solution that that is that is his exact words <laughs> just in a region well that that, that, <laughs> that sounds a little bit embarrassing but he he he, he told true, me he told it's me true. he told me that uh, if you're gonna listen to me once i think this is the one time because uh, i see a perfect match here bet- between you and carsten so so i took the advice and said okay then i will agreed to meet him and the family. I, I wasn't decided, but I said, okay, uh, I, I take you seriously enough. I was kind of in semi-retirement. Mm-hmm. I was coaching, but not not full speed. Uh, we mm-hmm. went up there. It was a tough day because it was a, a, a snowstorm from was another world. Classic Norway. So it was, yeah, Classic I, I, Norway. I, no worse. There was not one single bus in Oslo that was running that day. So what? just getting <laughs> to the airport was a challenge. Oh, my God. But um, got there. And we were uh, sitting uh, uh, until two, three in the morning, uh, talking. Uh, I felt instantly that the, he, here there is a good match. I didn't reveal that at the, at the time. Just I want to sit it out and see what they felt. And uh, when they, uh, I, I just decided very, very quickly that uh, if they will go for this solution, I will do that as well. But I didn't want to put the words in their mouth. Mm-hmm. How, what year was this, roughly? 2015. Right, okay. In the beginning of 2015. So you were actually, a lot of people don't know this, but you were a multi-eventer yeah. when you started out. So you were actually yeah. world champion in the, it was in the 2013 World Youth Championship. That right? is correct. How was that? How did, how did you find multi-eventing? Uh, I found it. It was actually a solution for me, so I didn't have to choose events, you know? I was doing all the events in Norway. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I did uh, in the national junior championships. I did eight different events. <laughs> so I was like, I I don't want to choose. So I ended up doing the octathlon. Mm -hmm. That was in the World Youth Championships before it was octathlon. That is eight events. It worked perfect for me. Then I went on to decathlon the next year. It was terrible for me. Really? Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> so I needed there. There was a lot of work that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and I tried to do that, but uh, then life came with the suggestion to do 400 meter hurdles and actually never really look back. Thank you for watching the World Athletics Podcast. To listen to the full episode, click the link down below.